Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest co host from Horrible Decisions, Wheezy yes. and Mandy B here. Who's been uh, a lot of sex talk earlier today, but but you know. And just so y'all know, off air, Envy in here lying, y'all, but I ain't gonna call him out. <laughs> what he like pee? No, I, I mean, I, he not... was he was a culprit. He was he was in, uh, involved in an activity oh. that he ain't shared with everybody. You was part of that activity, oh, well, y'all. No, no, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with you. So Ebony, you part of that. Anyway, we got a special <laughs> guest in the building yes, as well. We got a special <laughs> guest in the building. Okay, okay. Ebony K. Session? Williams is here. Ebony K. Williams. Good morning, Breakfast Club fam. Good uh, good morning, Horrible Decisions family. Hello, Thank fam. You. This is like a family reunion up in this piece. It really is. I feel like we about to start fighting. So let's just say we love each other now. I actually feel bad. I actually feel bad, and I'm gonna tell you why I feel bad because. Uh, I did two things this week that I normally don't do. Number one, if somebody I know is got something going on on social media, we should have spoke to them. I appreciate and that. And not about them. You know what I mean? And Ebony is our people. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we should have probably spoke to her, you know, reached out to her, like we always do for everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't watch uh, the full interview with Ayanla. Mm. I watched the, the, the clip online. The well, well, good, right? good thing I reached out to you, my good brother. Yes, and we had yes. a, a productive, spirited conversation. Yes, we did. And you rolled out the red carpet, and that's why I'm here today. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, did, did, who watched the full interview with Ayanla in here? I, I, I did listen to the full Holding Court episode I, I okay. well. with okay. Ebony okay. K. Williams okay. and Dustin Ross. Um, of course, I saw the clips as well. And I, as well, responded on my podcast, See The Thing Is, and, and, ah, and spoke about it as great, well. However, great. there was... There was more agreement with you than not, um, yeah. and so I'm excited to I, have I this think conversation. I, Ayanla was the, really the issue when watching it, though. Like, I mean, I, I made a comment on your page and mm-hmm. Breakfast Club page, yeah. and men was jumping down my throat because I'm like, what does it matter what she wants to be with? But I think the other comments were tough to to watch. So here's the thing: I want to first of all, as I started with my holding court episode, offer gratitude because I, I think what mm-hmm. we know, the fact that this conversation with myself and Dr. Ayanla, <clears throat> shout out to my soar. It aired last week. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about what's happened since then. We've had a whole White House Correspondents' Dinner, which, which Roy Wood Jr. killed. Shout out to Roy. Mm-hmm. We've had the Met Gala. We've got a war in Ukraine and still a war in Sudan. And yet folks is still talking about this shit more than <laughs> anything else. And I think that speaks to something, right? Mm-hmm. I think it speaks to the insatiable nature of the fact that we've got to have this conversation mm-hmm. as black men and women. And we're talking about the black family structure and black wealth building. And all of those are tenets that are tethered to why this has hit such a nerve and why it's reverberating, uh, you know, in, in a way, Tyrese posting about it, Jason Lee posting about it, the Shade Room posting about it, Spiritual World posting about it. Uh, y'all um, uh, Ava DuVernay in the comments, you know, Viola, Viola Davis, Davis in the comments. What was Viola saying? Uh, we get to it. So, 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 <laughs> so that's a good thing. I want to start by that framework. Nothing mm-hmm. about this is negative. Uh, people are disagreeing. People are feeling away. We're going to talk about it. But I want to start by the framing that this is, we cannot have rupture in the culture and not do the work of repair. So to me, this is a conversation about repairing and restoring what has historically been a productive, valuable conversation and relationship between black men and women that somehow, some way has gotten away from us. Mm. Well, yeah, so, I think it's yeah. two different conversations. Like I watched the well, full, well, and, like well, I don't care who There's you, a lot of people that don't know what you're talking about that might've just tuned in and, and, and have Today. no idea. So, Frank, go ahead, Frank. Do they, they live under a rock? Some, 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 some people, cause you, you have to tell people what you're talking about. Okay, okay. what are we so, talking so about? So it, it's coming from comments that, cause I don't want to misconstrue cause we only had a small piece of your conversation with Ayanna. Sure. So during your Ayanna conversation, she asked you if you would date a bus driver. So. Let me back up for one second and be correct. I invited Ayanla on my Griot show. That mm-hmm. Griot show airs on Byron Allen's network. Uh, the Griot airs every night at six. Let's let's first of all start with this whole shit is y'all's fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it always is. It always is. It always this is. whole shit is y'all's fault here at the Breakfast Club. No, love y'all. Y'all had Ayanla on, mm-hmm. and Ayanla made a statement on the Breakfast Club morning show, and she said that a lot of young black ladies out here are men in skirts, which you agreed with. Mm-hmm. Which, which I yep. found very provocative. Did mm-hmm. I not call you yep. that day? And I said, "Oh, this is spicy. I would love to participate in this conversation." Mm-hmm. And then you do what you always do, and you went, you went radio silent. That's cool. So then I invited <laughs> her. everybody that knows Charlamagne and, and is, is a loving relationship with Charlamagne. No, that's the shit he pulled. It's cool. It's, I never take a picture. <laughs> So it's cool. It's all. It's always love for, for seven years. So so then I said to my team, I said, reach out to Ayanla. Let's book and let's bring on the grill because I want to have the conversation and right. probably more productively, right, y'all? Black woman to black woman. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also generation to generation. Let's talk to yeah, each cause other. Yeah, because she old. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say you season. You should hope to season. get to that age. That's yeah. it. Oh, no, yes. of course. We don't I, the alternative. I, I, I want to right. age. I want to <laughs> age. Right. Amen. Gracefully, beautifully. Okay, so Yana comes on, and I and I say this is the framing. I say to Dr. Von Zanta, Yana, I say, sis, 
Doctor yes. Soror, talk to me about what you would recommend black women do in terms of our posture and positioning. When you're right, we are, I am, showing up in a posture of building, providing, and protecting my own self. I'm, I'm, I'm showing up in masculine energy, masculine as you would energy. call it. Yep. I'm conceding your point. But tell me how you would guide me to not do so when, I'll be honest, I don't really feel like I can trust that if I don't do it, that there's going to be ad adequate, keyword there, adequate mm -hmm. provision and protection if I don't do it. Mm -hmm. Which and is how you said it. That's exactly how I said it, right? And she said, beloved, <laughs> would you date a bus driver? And then the clip goes. And then I, I, I did stare into the abyss <laughs> because I wasn't really sure where we were going. But OK, because she is an elder and she's also my soror and the deference. If you know, you know, I'm gonna go with you. Mm -hmm. So I honestly answered y'all in that moment. If he owned the bus and that's what I said, Envy. But mm -hmm. what people heard based on the comments that I said bus drivers wasn't shit. People heard Did that I broke? said that bus drivers broke, don't make no money, and got no benefits, and that they were beneath me. That somehow was the interpretation of me saying that I will date a bus owner. Now, let me tell you what I actually said, and this is what the whole Holden Court shit was about. Go go check that out right now where you get your podcast, Holden Court with Ebony K. Williams featuring Dustin Ross. I said on Holden Court, y'all, let me tell you why ownership is it for me. It's not about salary. Y'all made it about salary. Y'all started debating 125 a year versus 160 a year versus 200 a year. Well, you, yeah. you did quote stats before you went into the thing with Yaya Lynn. You well, talked, talked about, about women, income, who earn, women earn more money than men. And I talked about black women buying more homes. We buy mm -hmm. homes that single black women mm -hmm. are buying 20% of the market share of new real estate on the market. I know because I just closed last summer and it was a shit show in underwriting. That's mm -hmm. another they're conversation. They're graduating more. They're, they're in college. college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Highest rate of I think I said it to you, Charlamagne, because yeah, Charlamagne, yeah, yeah, yeah. even you guys do so much work on The Breakfast Club about what? HBCUs. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I was devastated when my good friend uh, Eugene Scott sent me a post, a uh, Washington Post article that said black men are going to HBCUs one to two. It's two to one for black women graduating. So these are things we got to look at because you have daughters and you have daughters and some of y'all in here got daughters. And if they're going to want to partner and marry men mm -hmm. and black men at that, and they're going to want to build together as you two cite your marriages as examples of, we got to, we got to talk about how people can be equally yoked. So back to ownership, Charlemagne. I said, ownership is key for me. Why? Not because I'm a bougie bitch. This is not about everybody being a Harvard surgeon. This is about this book right here, Bet on Black. You've read it, Charlemagne. Y'all were at the party. Y'all mm -hmm. know what time it is. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be free in America as a black person when you don't own anything. And I mean that with my fiber and my being. And I'm going to prove it to you. My grandfather, Carrie James Williams, had a fourth grade education in Mount Pillar, Louisiana. He then provided for my family with everything they needed by doing five things at one time. That man cut hair. He, he made and sold moonshine. He cut graveyards on the weekend. He also worked a salary job at a feed mill. If you know about that feed mill life, then you know. My point in this is saying this, and then he raised my grand, my mother, excuse me, Gloria, who also did not complete college. She took two years at Texas Southern. She said, how much? 50000 It ain't going to be that for me. And she peaced out. And she started her own business. She drove the bus. So for all of y'all in the comments, when my daddy drove a bus, when my mama drove a bus, my mother drove a bus as well, y'all. She drove a bus until she acquired a skill set. In her case, it was cosmetology. She took her, she drove the bus in the morning, the school bus. She would get off the bus. She would go to Universal Beauty School off of Betis Ford Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. She would then get back on the bus, drive the afternoon shift. Then she would come check on me, make sure that I was doing what I needed to do. And then she would go drive for UPS. So for those of y'all talking to me, like, I don't know what a CDL license can do. I, I helped my mom study for a CDL when I was nine years old. I, I promise you I know about that life. My point is this. It's about skills. It is nothing wrong with driving a bus if that is your maximum skill set. I simply want to call black America up to the excellence that I know we can occupy. I've seen it before. Entrepreneurship is the key to me. That's not just me talking. That's Earl Graves Sr., the, 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 the founder and visionary of black enterprise. I'm talking about black enterprise, black ownership and black liberation. And it is important to me. A, it's, it's in my DNA. It's my personal legacy because my mama told me, y'all, nobody will pay you what you will pay you. Mm. And this is not about shaming bus drivers. But I want to be clear. If you are driving a bus today 
and that is the maximum of your skill set. I love and appreciate it for you. I have to because it's an honest day's living. But I want to tell you the truth. And this is not about hurting feelings or, or talking down or being an elitist. I need you to know that in 10 years, you may or may not have a job because... AI, AI. AI. Yeah. artificial yeah. intelligence. See, this is the part nobody is, wants to talk about. The lawyers might not have a job in 10 years. They might not. <laughs> and that's why <laughs> we might not have a job. So, 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 so I'm glad you, yeah. you're going there, Charlemagne, mm-hmm. because this is the part of the conversation that people really are, are feeling triggered by. We all have to reassess constantly our skill set and how it's applicable today and how it might or might not be applicable tomorrow. So this goes back to everybody in the comments. Well, my daddy drove a bus and he did this and this and he was respectful and he was a good black man. He was a great black man, I'm sure. I'm sure all the bus drivers are saints and none of them cheat and none of them beat women and they all are just God-fearing men that show up in how they're supposed to in this world, I believe well, not all, but I'm uh, saying... Like, no, no, I mean, that's the narrative. Yeah, 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 it's just sarcasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. the narrative. Yeah. And all people that dare to own, that dare to uh, advance a skill set in a different kind of way, not a better way or a worse way, a different kind of way, they all have full-blown AIDS, beat their wives, and will die alone. That's the narrative. What Tyler Perry movie is this? That's right. what I'm saying. It is temptation. It's very Tyler Perry. <laughs> it is <laughs> But Ebony, what about the bus drivers that their goal was to own a home? And what if they came from something that necessarily wasn't the best education and driving the bus is I think we got to broaden the successful. conversation. I think we keep See, using the words like bus this, drivers. This, and we gotta, this, this is what, what bothers me to make it seem like Bus drivers only drive buses, Why would you talk about bus drivers? Let's generalize. Let's generalize. We can talk bus drivers. We can talk police officers. We can talk MTA workers. We can talk all these different people that work at these quote-unquote average jobs. Every day working class people. Now, this is my problem, right? Now, you know I do real estate, and I do these seminars all across the country, right? We get thousands of people. The majority of people that own homes and investment homes are your quote-unquote average workers, all your bus drivers, all your MTA workers. So they just don't drive buses. They have properties. They have... I know a police officer that drives Ferraris because it's not from his police job. It's from the houses that he owns that he made off the police job. You sure it's not from the cocaine? I'm he's a thousand percent. In the, uh, no, he's a, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm a thousand I'm playing, percent. I'm playing. He, That's has, a joke. he has more properties than you, me, and Charlotte That's put together. Joke. That's who he is. That's but, a joke. But they yeah. take it serious. But I know these people that do it, and they put in hard work. So when you said... I wouldn't date a, a, a bus driver unless he owned his own bus. A lot of people felt it like, yo, that's disrespectful because just because I took a job and a lot of people take those jobs for a couple of different reasons. One, the benefits, right? Sure. They know they can work for 20 years. After 20 years, they can retire and they still get their retirement and they still get their benefits. So after 20 years, they can. Most police officers, the same thing. They get their retirement. They can still carry their firearm and they can still get their benefits. So I look at it as that's a great hustle. They work for 20 years. At the end of 20 years, let's say they start at 21. At 41, they done working the bus company, done being a police officer, done being MTA, and now they're just making money on top of money. So it's value over values, right? Envy, let me stop you right there. It's not. It's not. Do, do you think for one second, and I know you don't know me that well, but correct. we've had enough conversation. Mm-hmm. I had you on Revolt Black News. You talked to me about your father who was mm-hmm. a leader in law. Do you think for one second I'm about to push back on anything you just offered in that statement? You can't. Right. right. So, 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 can. so I cannot. And so what I'm telling you is what you are applying now is not the facts as they were given to me. The, Ayala did not ask me, Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also had a real estate portfolio? Mm-hmm. Ayala did not ask me. Hold on now. Uh, Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also has um, a, a litany of franchises? Because you and your wife just bought five, right? Six. Chris, six, six crystals. Chris Crystals? Yeah. Mm, crystal Burgers. Long. Okay. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask. That was not the framing of the question, Envy. Yep. Had that been the framing of the question, I would have said, Dr. Vons, where the fuck he at? So, <laughs> but you have to come with a resume and say, all the properties that I own, or do you get to know that man and see what he's about? But see, that's the man's Here's the thing. Y'all didn't listen to the whole Ayanla interview. Go ahead, Sean. Ebony actually agreed with Ayanla. That's what's confusing me. Well, because you actually agreed with Ayanla when she talked about, you know, you should be open to dating a bus driver. You can build with a bus driver. You actually agreed with that. So that was confusing me. You agreed with Ayanla then also conflated more and said a loving man, yeah. someone that loves right. what they does. There was a whole lot of other things. So she agreed that, of course, I want a, a loving man. I want a man that's passionate. I want a man with a plan. All the other things that came after the bus driver is what Ebony agreed to. Yeah, so I, that, I say, why let the Grio put out a clip that is more salacious and out of context when you actually that's did media. agree? That's media. Well, I'm not going to throw uh, the Grio yeah, right. under the bus. See what I did there. Uh-huh. But um, what I am <laughs> going to do, <laughs> but what I am going to do is say that we know the business that we are in. So mm-hmm. you said something, Charlemagne, um, on the show yesterday. Well, like we're entertainers um, and we have to not over um, and index for our. Yeah. Okay, so I want to be clear. My, my, my beloved, I'm, on my, uh, I, I'm actually not an entertainer. 
I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm an educator. I'm an advocate. I happen to use the form of television, radio, and podcasting to do my work. See, we can't conflate platform with purpose. So why did the Grio uh, and the, the, the brilliant, talented team of journalists over there decide to use the bus driver clip, which is sensational and controversial? Because let's be honest, the Grio is not getting the eyeballs the Breakfast Club is getting. Revolt Black News is not getting the eyeballs the Breakfast Club is getting or the view is getting or the talk used to get because the, the, the nature of not just black culture of American culture is entertainment first. So when you start doing the work of educating around where artificial intelligence is taking the culture, Mm -hmm. where you start doing the work about where uh, criminal justice reform, how this this summer, the U.S. Supreme Court, y'all affirmative action is we all know it. That shit is gone. Know that. But no one is going to watch in the volume that we need to have the impact that I seek as a teacher in this world, Charlemagne, if we don't. Put out that clickbait. That's the reality. So it was to bring attention to a larger to try, conversation. And, and guess what? What we know, because we all sitting here today talking about this shit a week later, is it worked? It worked. But then it you, worked. Then you came back, and, and the next day, people feel like you doubled down. I just don't feel like I did. I, okay. I, I, stood, I stood 10 toes down. And what did but you I don't say think when that you, was you, standing you, down, though. I think you completely like took a different turn. I like, agree. That was, that you was, think so? I agree. I, thought, I, I actually thought it was tough I, to I watch. And you know I love you, but like. No, you know but it, I feel you, but that has love ain't got nothing to do with it. Tina told us that. So go ahead. I want to hear the response. Because to me, 10 downs would Ten toes down would have been like, yeah, this is the choice that I'm making. This is my preference. This is the type of man I want. What I watched were you talking about people as a whole, right? Even white supremacy bringing up, calling, saying average. Like it to me, it felt like almost attack on the working class and the people that were in them comments more than it was the man you're looking for. So let's address it, Weezy. I'm glad you brought that up because that is the turn that I took. So at this point, who gives a fuck about who Ebony K. Williams is dating? Let's throw that over to the side because it's it's a it's a that's your preference. I agree. And 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 who gives a fuck, right? So now let's talk about my real work in this world. The work God has called me to do, which is to always sit in a posture of elevating, advancing and offering options to black Americans for us to have a first class existence. So when Mm. I talk about a permanent black underclass, that's something that I talked about in the response video that Weezy citing. A lot of people felt a way about that. What the fuck does she mean, a permanent black underclass? What I mean is the data. So I sent Charlemagne uh, a bar graph from the U.S. Census yesterday, and it, it listed about 15 different Global identity. So again, you got to zoom out for this. This is not about black folks and white folks in America. This is global. At the top of that, y'all, this is earnings. Indian Americans earn more than anybody else in America. At the very bottom, black Americans. It's like they were only earning about $100,000 per year per average. Not a few, not half. 100% of average. their average is 100000 plus. We were down here at around 28000 30000 Okay. Where are white people? In the middle, Weezy. They weren't up here. So that's why I have a personal problem with a lot of the culture saying that we should not have to be excellent. We should, we used, we talked about this Charlemagne yesterday on the phone. We should get to be basically as mediocre, as average as white Americans. For me, that's a no, I'm gonna tell you why. I travel the world, y'all all travel the world. Y'all mm-hmm. are global citizens and we're blessed and privileged to do so. I got news for y'all. White mediocrity is depreciating fast. So I'm not going to hold white mediocrity, white subpar, white averageness as a standard for the generation of black children we're raising today. Well, what does America do without the working class? First of all, it's not about not not having a working class. It's saying that why do black people, I'm so glad you asked this, why do black people disproportionately occupy it? Now, you made a very good point yesterday, Charlemagne, talking about essential workers, okay? America found out, if we didn't know before, how essential our bus drivers, our MTA drivers, our home health nurses, our custodians, our grocery store workers were during fast food, Mm -hmm. all of it during COVID. And God knows we were ringing those pots and shouting them out. And God bless our essential workers. Nobody loves them more than your girl here. But you know what I don't love is that black folks died at a two to one rate of during COVID, that black folks were on ventilators more often during COVID. And part of the reason why that was the case, y'all, is because we we over index in the blue collar working sector, in the essential jobs. And many of us don't have the option that we all had, which was to do our jobs virtually. So we are on the front lines in a way that disproportionately makes us vulnerable. We're dying because of it. That is my issue. Not to disrespect these people. I feel like you're changing the goalposts, right? What people were upset about was what you said. And everything that you said could absolutely positively be true. People were upset that they felt like that you were putting down the average person, quote unquote, average job. And the person that was working the average job, that 
that their their what they do is not as good as what you do. That, that's, that's a projection, that, that's, Envy. No, that, Envy, uh, that's a projection. That's because what, what, let, you let, know me finish, what I, I let you speak. Go ahead, go ahead, go talk, go ahead Envy. Yeah. So, so when you start talking about all this, and, and I read the comments just like you did because I wanted to prepare myself when you came up here to, to understand what people yeah. were mad about yeah. and what, understand what people were upset about. So when you're talking about all this, this brother this and, and the black man this and the white supremacy this and this, that, and mm -hmm. the other, that's all to the side of how you felt about that quote unquote average job, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll be honest with you, right? And one of the comments that I said, and, and, and maybe I'm not sure, right? The guy was like, he was like, you talk about all this about lifting a brother up and lift it, lifting this up and white supremacy and, and what you do for our people. And then the first thing the brother said was, but your fiance was white. And I'm sitting there like, how, how do you talk about how much you uplifting and how much you're going for black people, but that's not necessarily what you're even looking for? Well, first of all, Paging Dr. Umar, <laughs> damn. Well, no, that, that's well, the, no let's, let's address said. it. And, and let's, wrong, not, wrong, let's, not skip, let's not skip a beat. Mm -hmm. So I would love to know how you envy know what I'm looking for. Because we never don't. had the conversation. I don't so, know. But, but I'm, you asking, just I'm telling you what it. people are saying on comments what I've right. read. And I'm, and, and I'm talking for them. I'm not a bus driver. I am, I'm oh, speaking I for, the, for the average person out there because I feel for them because the bus drivers and the average person are what keeps these lights on here on The Breakfast Club. That's right. They keep me, they keep me booking Envy, shows. Nobody they keep saying, me okay, first HBCUs. of all, this is not about you I, booking I'm, I'm shows. Asking, I'm, I'm this just is telling about, you how I feel. So when you shit on the people that no, first ride of all, with me, uh, I Envy, ride you're with dead them. ass wrong for framing it as me shitting on them. You don't first think of, it was shitting on them? I know it. First of all, I know it wasn't. I, I think what you're saying have right you now is irresponsible. I think what you're saying is irresponsible. Do you understand how people feel? Do you Envy, listen to the calls, how people I feel? I think what you are framing right no. now in this moment is highly irresponsible. How? Because we're, I'm going to, if you listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Because if you were to listen to all of the full Yana interview, mm -hmm. the full sidebar, the full episode of Holding Court, Nowhere in any of that commentary did I say a cross or negative word about the working class of black America, of America broadly, or black men. I'm going to get to the why was my fiance. Envy, let me finish this statement. Do you know what I'm people going feel? to get to. I'm just because you didn't I don't mean deal to hurt somebody. Feelings. Just First because all, you didn't mean to affect deal, somebody doesn't mean you didn't hurt a community. I, don't I can say deal anything about feelings. somebody, but like I didn't mean to hurt you. But if you hurt people, you hurt people. If feel if people feel a way about you, they feel a way about you because those people that you talked about are the people that buy your books, that listen to this show, and they're hurt. <sighs> listen, what about, Ebony, uh, Ebony, what about words like I, no, average, really, mediocre, I'm, I'm mediocrity, to, oh typical, and the bigotry of low expectations? I think those that are the words people. that hurt the working. You class. can sit here and say, "No, I didn't hurt nobody." You hurt people out there that buy your books and follow you and support. You. you asked but me to be quiet. Y'all, please. Y'all asked me to be quiet. I listened to your full statement. I understand you and have a feeling about it. now that you talked for 22 it. minutes and I just spoke for 60 seconds. But she seconds. is here to talk to him. I know, but so I'm just saying, I just spoke for 60 we, seconds. We got ours off already. Let Ebony I talk. I'm just, I'm just returning what she said. Don't, ahead, don't act like I didn't let her speak. She spoke for 22 Absolutely. minutes. Go ahead, go ahead, Ebony. Go ahead. Let her talk. Don't do that. Let her go. Go ahead. So, Envy, this is where we're different. My primary focus and goal when I do what I do in the world is not to, to protect feelings. I'm going to be candid with you. I understand it's clear from the energy that there is an emotional attack that you felt was on black men, the working class, and black America. I'm going to hold the space for the hurt feelings around that. But more than I care about hurt feelings, I care about providing my people with facts and information that say that the current way of life for the majority of black Americans is not serving us. I'm going off of the data and the facts. That is, I am not okay, and I don't think it's okay, that the vast majority of black Americans, again, overpopulate, disproportionately occupy spaces that are not ideal, that make us vulnerable. I talked about the COVID, that make us vulnerable to Death, disease, maternal health, all the things that we that y'all all talk about on this show every day. Now, if y'all are OK with the current positioning of black America, that we are the lowest income, the lowest home ownership, the lowest educated group, then so be it. And let's just let's just stop talking now and keep on going about our business. Envy, I'm not OK with it. So that is why I said what I said about addressing the bigotry of low expectations. It's the bigotry of low expectations is the reason why I have to submit that black men are now going to HBCUs and college and generally at half the rate of black girls and women. I don't think that's okay. Shouldn't we address the system that put us in these positions? We are though? addressing the system, but, for, but first we have to name it, Charlemagne. See, that's where people's feelings are getting hurt, is the fact that I am naming it. I am saying that it is not okay to bring C's and D's through the, to, to your home and then expect to go to, on to higher education and acquire a higher skill set. And when you say that, that is hurtful to people, Envy. I'm acknowledging the pain.
But somebody has got to start telling the truth to our people. And some of y'all wonder why you get the political representation y'all get, because some folks would rather hear things that make them feel good than understand and hear the things that are the truth. So let's talk about average, mediocre, and typical. Because because a lot of people felt a way about it. Well, I looked it up. I Pull did the, the service definition. of pulling it up out of Marion Webster. So this is not Ebony shitting on anybody, Envy. This is simply to say when you do something average, by definition, it is of typical value. It is normal and it is standard. When you are regular, normal, acceptable. When you are mediocre, that would have people real hot. It means ordinary, That's medium, commonplace and moderate and the bigotry no, don't forget the bigotry of low expectations i'm gonna get to that that's an academic study okay mm -hmm. so, so those of you that think that's uh george w bush go do your reading go do your reading but let's talk about those words charlemagne nothing in there says you ain't shit nothing in there says it's bad or low or beneath they've applied the negative connotation to that, that's words. a projection and mm -hmm. i'm not going to stand for it because you need to be honest with the actual semantics in which we are talking about so when you say regular hard-working everyday people charlemagne that is uh rhetorically not any different than me saying average mediocre work i not disagree the because those words can be weaponized it's like the word basic has been okay. weaponized. Yeah, so, but, but, i can call y'all basic but, i can call y'all basic but, but, but that's what i'm be saying a, but there's a, a negative upset. connotation it's you call me mediocre it, i'm out the room but, 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 it's but, it's but, but also See, I, made a whole song call. I don't want no but, mediocre but also we've done that with the n-word we've done it with the word whore there's negative connotations to a lot of words and if someone calls it to you i get that but we reclaim the word whore. you are talking about something totally different but what i'm saying is nobody is reclaiming average and mediocre even when she brought up c C's and D's in school, academically, a C says you're average. That's exactly what I don't it know. means. I don't know people why have that's a problem, a problem being pe average. Because people are okay Mandy, accepting Mandy, C's. Mandy, I'm going to tell you. Because I don't think essential workers are average. But, okay, I don't think essential all, workers are average. Let me finish this statement. I don't think, because, I don't think because Uber drivers, of, bus drivers, I don't think any of those people are average immediately. I'm not saying they're, that the people are average. So let's, let's, let's slow it down. I don't down. think the job is average. The job is average. I don't think The job is average by definition. It says that most people can do it per the skill set. It also speaks to the income it commands it speaks to scarcity and demand so what that's what we're about talking about that are holding college degrees that have to drive uber right now because they're, they they're doing mediocre it. work so so easy let me be very but, clear but, as to what i'm not saying no y'all have to listen to this i am not saying that a piece of paper makes you a more valuable individual i didn't say that i don't believe that i prove it to you i let i, I let a lawyer go because when I was ready to go, where I was trying to go and vacation with him, you, sir, your particular way of practicing law did not allow provision and protection. But I think it's what's the real question is if C's and D's aren't good enough, and you're saying that do a you higher think C's education and D's are good enough. What I'm saying is you're saying a higher education also doesn't mean that. Then what do they have to do to be excellent? Because be exceptional. I'm someone who did have C's, B's, A's. I own three businesses. I'm sitting here with all y'all, and shit, we all make seven figures. Maybe I'm on the lower end of this it's, as a mediocre whoa, person. Whoa, whoa. It's like. I, you don't know what I make. I don't know make that kind of money. I, I mean, why are you he probably, lying? He probably makes eight. Listen, but, you couldn't tell him about <laughs> Weezy. So, but, 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 but Weezy, did you hear about the story fair. about my mother? Weezy, she doesn't have a college degree. My grandfather didn't, but she never did it. I no, did no, no, hear about she your did, mom. Right, so she's not mediocre. Not because, But when she drove that bus, she was doing mediocre work. We can call her up and she'll say that. And that, that it's the frame. But, but what do they have to do to surpass it then for you? You have to do something. Not for me. <laughs> But by this your standards, because if, if Charlemagne is saying it's not mediocre or average and the people listening feel like they're not by your. OK, this, I just want people question, to Evan. stand on it. Like, I, yeah. I want people to stand on it. If you are a person and we're talking about black America and you feel as if you have maxed out your skill set, whether it's in the classroom or when you wake up in the morning and do whatever it is that you do, then God bless you. And I support and love you. I am talking to black people that I know have a potential skill set that is untapped. So that's the difference between mediocre and exceptional. Not the piece of paper, not the, even the income. It's are you complicit and, and complacent, complacent in what you are doing currently or are you willing to go above and beyond and, and do more. the thing that most people won't do by definition, Weezy? That's where above exception and beyond lies. could be the nurse that drives Uber on the side. I think that's why Look, I'm my like... Father, my father was a military. He was a mechanic. He was a bus driver. He was a police officer. So he was officer. exceptional. Your father was exceptional. My mother worked at Guardian Life Insurance. I'm the first person in my family to go to college, first person to graduate from college, and my parents put me through college. So I don't look at them as mediocre. I don't look at them as average. They are exceptional, and they did what they do to get their what kids through all this stuff. What you said is so stuff. different than what and I'm I, talking and about. I am the same with them. And I 
and, and, say, that is and just the not and the intellectually honest. And the difference what you're doing. is what you said is, oh, you want to encourage and you want to do this. I do the same thing without putting people down. I'm not putting I, people down. I'm being very I honest. I think you are. And, and people have been saying, I don't think you're listening. Like as much as you talk, you're not listening to what people oh, I'm are saying. Listening. I'm not, not bothered by that though. Not. I'm not because going people to be are shamed. Hurt and they have opinions. Just like I you have your opinion, you can't talk over people and not let people talk. But you also interrupting me. I'm not. I was talking. You keep talking to me. I let you speak, and then I just started talking. You got it. I just started talking. I let you speak, and I waited for you to be quiet, and I started talking. You heard something that you didn't like, and you cut me off. Envy, that's how ahead. it just went. Because once you start no, being intellectually not, dishonest, here we go. Now it's not envy. Go ahead. No, that's exactly let's, what let's happened. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Uh, no, but but if if, if, if cool. I give somebody the platform to speak, and I let you speak, then I speak, and you have to listen, just like I listen, just like with, with Weezy and Mandy when they speak, I listen. It, it, it doesn't matter that we don't agree or disagree. We can have a conversation, but we got to respect each other in this conversation. I agree. I think that and part the, of that respect I, I, is being honest. Yeah, and I think I, the, I think the conversation is healthy. I, 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 if you listen to the whole Ayanla interview, I get a better sense of what you're trying to say. But uh, the second, the doubling down is what threw me completely off. What threw it you did off sound, about it? It did sound like you was uh, shitting on the working class. I'm not shitting on the working class. And, 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 if, and if you think, weren't, I think, I think you is, need to make that very clear. Well, I've I've tried to make it clear with three different examples. I think y'all don't want to hear it, and that's okay, Envy. It's okay. It like you said, it's okay to disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can say. We can argue semantics back because that's really at this point, this is an argument around semantics. This is not around intention. This is not around feelings. This because we talked about the data. We've gone to the dictionary to define the words. Now it is. I heard what you said, but this is how it made me feel. So what is Ebony K. Williams trying to say? I am saying plainly, Charlemagne, mm -hmm. that I believe in maximizing skill sets for black Americans. I believe in ownership, entrepreneurship, and multiple streams of income as a way tethered to our liberation as black people who were brought here in chattel some 16, 19 year. Mm -hmm. And if that makes you feel a way, maybe it's time to do something about it. That's all, and many people are. So when Envy talks about this example of his father uh, being in law enforcement and being a business owner and doing three, four things on top of that, that is nowhere near mediocrity. That is called exceptionalism. That is called a black man availing himself to his highest calling and skill set. He talks about his mother and what she did. That is not mediocrity. By the way, there's nothing wrong with mediocrity. By definition, it's not bad nor good, it's mediocre. It is typical and it is regular. But if you are looking for me, if anybody, is looking for me to 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 put out a permission slip for people that look like me and come from where I come from, which is the diaspora, around average is good enough, um, medium is okay, just do enough to get by. No, I'm not going to make that soft place for you to land. Well, to Weezy's question, what's what is exceptional then? I, it's very simple. Y'all keep acting like it's hard. Anything that goes above your minimum skill set. That's it. Whatever that is for you, that might be driving the Uber. Like I mm -hmm. said, when my mother was driving the Charlotte Mecklenburg school bus and working for UPS at night and putting herself through beauty school, all in a means to advance her skill set so she could go do finger waves for seven hours. And then when she realized, okay, I have a skill set on top of that, shout out to finger waves, mm -hmm. okay? I don't want to stand on my feet doing mm -hmm. finger waves seven hours a day. I, I, I can do something different than that. She opened a childcare facility. She, then she opened another one, and then she bought tractor trailers, and then she had a fleet of trucks. Did it bother you then when people brought up salary and money because yes. you had a different point? Yes, and that's but why I said did in the that in the interview, though. You brought yeah. up salary when you when you set the conversation. You talked about how Along women are making more money things. than men, and ownership. how they're buying houses more than exactly. men, and that's so ownership. You, so you, you set that table. Yeah, but well, but, but even what she's saying too factor. in terms of salary, she's saying multiple streams of income at the same time. Yeah, which is why okay, he's a bus driver. Your father did multiple things and own mm -hmm. property. No, he didn't do multiple things. Well, he, he, well, he was a mechanic. He only did yeah, one thing at yeah, one but, time. But, he just worked overtime to make property, sure I was good. He didn't own he, no properties, nothing. My pops did, was, he didn't invest. He doesn't know anything about the stock market. I'm the first person in my family to and invest in anything. Do. Okay. Correct. He yeah, doesn't know anything I, about it. But I would also say that a lot of people in our communities don't have the opportunities that a lot of people do. And Ebony, don't have I, I don't think, Ebony, you're speaking enough to the disadvantages they, they that don't black have, people they don't face. Have the advantages that put us in the, they don't have the, the ability words, to get jobs. jobs. They don't have those ability. They don't have those abilities that a lot of my... And white you, neighbors now have. I, I and wish to be fair, I went to, shout out to Evans High School in Orlando, Florida, 98% uh, black, especially when I went, graduated in 09. Um, we had trades. So like literally it was a nursing program. It was mm -hmm. cosmetology school. My, my mom believed in just going into the healthcare field and then we had hospitality as another option. 
we're literally taught at, these are the jobs that are that are suitable for you as well yeah. at a very young age. I'm I, I'm I was about to go to be an, a CPA. Sure. I worked at a big four. Worked at Goldman Sachs. Worked worked at EY. Right. Yeah. I was unfamiliar that those jobs and opportunities were available to me until I moved to New York City. Yeah. Coming from Orlando, I didn't know I could be an accountant or what Wall Street was in finance. And so I do agree to to that standpoint that we we're not even given the scope of what our opportunities can Would those okay. jobs be considered so, mediocre? So, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. look, look you just poking a bear now. Now you just poking. But, no, maybe no, have to, I, but let's let Ebony say her last, her last words and okay. can get whatever she has to get out without interrupting because you know we have to go, we have to cut this up. No, we have to cut it up because it goes on. Of in, in course. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I, I will say this. Uh, to Envy's point of our people not knowing, I agree with you which is why I am so incensed and I'm so committed to having this conversation. Right now, if y'all, you, you uh, single family homeowners, if you need a tree cut from your yard, that truck that's gonna cut it down is not cranking for less than $5,000. That's right. So we have to talk about those things. And so y'all can get stuck in mediocre and average and the terminology and your hurt feelings if you want to. I suggest you get out of those feelings and you start thinking about HVAC. You start thinking about heating and air. You start thinking about, oh, what would it look like to be an electrician and own my own bed? And again, in ownership. Not working for a salary job for somebody else unless that is your maximum skill set. So if you're somebody that says, hey, I, I, I don't want to take on the work or I cannot take on the work of balancing the books and running the taxes and doing. All, got it. No problem. Then go do that. So but those aren't average jobs. It's around your skill set. It's not about the job being average. It's okay. your skill set. If you know that if C and D back to the academics, mm. if that is your best, God bless you. I just know for a lot of us, that is the bigotry of low expectations. Mm -hmm. That is an academic social science study done by a man named Michael Gerber. OK, and, and it's important that we have expectations for our black children that that start at the top to Mandy's point earlier. That says, I see the best in you. I expect the best in you. If you fall short of that, let's look at why that is. And then we go about the business of black collaboration you told excellence. one big lie today what you, was that you are an entertainer because to be honest with you nothing mm -hmm. you said in this moment was wrong but the clip that you put out it was salacious on purpose there's no way ebony because what i believe you i know you want better for us i know that you're speaking from a place of honesty yeah. and love but that clip was entertainment and i, I think mean, I don't one think it can't exist without the other Listen, I, I'm not saying I'm not entertaining. Yeah. You know, I can see because, of course, that that's a part of my personality. It's a mm -hmm. part of the nature of the work. What that's my whole career path. When mm -hmm. you see what you're describing, is I'm taking deep intellectual capacity and I'm marrying it with personality and aesthetic packaging that is palatable for global consumption. So basically, you kind of gotta make them feel bad. No, I don't have to make anybody feel bad. And you know, y'all can stay on that. Y'all can take that to the grave. For them to read, for them no, to want I, more. No, my intention was never for anybody to feel bad. But to Envy's point, intention means nothing. If I step on your toe and I didn't mean to, your toe, your toe still hurts. Mm -hmm. So I'm not debating mm -hmm. intention. intention. Yeah. I'm saying it might have been painful, regardless of my intention. And yet, how do we move on from it? Because again, I'm not preoccupied. I'm not going to not say what I believe and feel for the sake of feelings. Can I, can I want to say, uh, how do you feel about the American dream? And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is the American dream is the belief that anyone, regardless of where they were born or what class they were born into, can attain their own version yes. of success in a society which upward mobility is, is possible for everyone. So all of these jobs that we're talking about, yeah. that is those people's version of success yeah. that is their american dream what's yeah. wrong with that what's wrong with them I having think you that? know the answer nothing charlemagne okay nothing like come on we talking to, we're now we're talking circularly to envy's point there's nothing wrong with that i am simply he said it there are people that don't know what's possible there are people that don't know man i would love to have a salon what does that take well let me start an llc well let me maybe i need to convert to an s corporation maybe i need to do this and so 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 when, when we are so cut up with feelings because we don't want people to feel bad we don't want to call out what people don't have access to or knowledge around i think it's stagnant i think we all agree with that and what envy's saying what everybody mm -hmm. else is saying is you can say all of that and that's true without calling people average, mediocre, typical, that's what or telling is. them they're stuck in the low expectations You know how I know Ebony more educated than me? If I y'all not ask me that question, I'd say, well, what do you look like? I just don't think those are words that should be used to describe the work. And I think that's, that's I think, and I think per the dictionary, <laughs> per the dictionary per the di and per the facts. So again, we, we spent 40 minutes talking about something that's very simple and unfortunate that this is really where we landed, Charlemagne, because we're talking about personal projections around defined words. 
That's really what this whole, and that's why brother is nodding. But you can you can weaponize the fine. But I'm not. But don't put that on me because I'm not weaponizing it. Whether you think you did or not, I told you I think you did. Well, you can think whatever you want, Charlemagne. And a lot of other people did too. I don't care what. It could be Jesus Christ thinking it. I know what I said. I know what I said. If it's Jesus Christ, you better listen. If it's Jesus Christ, you better listen. Well, you listen. But I think I do. I do. I do appreciate the broader conversation. You better listen to Jesus. That's right. Well, we thank you for for. I appreciate the platform. I really do. But let's be very careful that we are not so blindsided, stuck, and uh, regressive in our feelings that we're not able to to hear clearly the facts and the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Ebony, Ebony K. K. Williams. Williams. That's it. All right. Well, that was your rumor report, too. My, my Bus driver gate continues. Hey, <laughs> Bus driver gate. <laughs> Bus driver gate. I, the People's <laughs> Choice mix is up next. <laughs> we'll see you Ebony guys. Ebony I love her, man. It. All right. But we, should, but we should do this more it's often. Just a conversation. Like, it's this should have happened last week actually yeah i agree it's the people's choice mix it's the breakfast club good morning wake that ass up in the morning the breakfast club